What's up, superstars? Welcome back to the Brain Tainment Podcast. Today, I'm joined by the first two-time guest on the show, so I'm pretty bloody excited. Super popular personal trainer and someone who is vastly knowledgeable in the space of all things health and fitness. He's a buddy of mine, and he's the host of the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast, which is an absolute beauty as well. So when you're done with this episode, maybe scope out some of the stuff that he's put out there. So that all said, mate, I'm looking forward to diving in. Welcome to the show again, Dan Kennedy. Liam, thanks for having me on, mate. Uh, very much appreciated. Our, our last conversation was extremely enjoyable, and whenever we um, whenever we have a chat, even before we hit record, it's always um, it's always enjoyable and valuable. So uh, hopefully, we can provide everyone with um, plenty of value from today's chat, mate. No doubt. It's funny. I feel like um, as I was trying to prepare a little bit for our conversation today, I felt myself going in different directions because I want to I want to pick your brain on so many levels, whether it's you know um, nutrition or workout routines or even just some of the mindset stuff uh, that I know you're very passionate about too. But just for context for those tuning in, we're going to go hard on um, how to transform our body. Okay, whether it's lose weight, gain weight. I just want to provide some really tangible takeaways for people uh, in terms of getting the body that that they want. Um, so they've got some stuff to walk away with and go bang, implement this week, this month, and and make some changes. But mate, before we do that, I'm actually just curious, what uh, what music you're jamming to at the moment? I know we have a pretty similar taste in music. I'd love to know what you're pumping at the moment. Yeah, mate, I've been a day one fan of Russ um, for a long time. So Russ is Russ is one of my go tos for sure. Um, to be honest, man, like anything like hip hop and rap is pretty much like. I'm all over it these days. Like well, I, I used to listen to a lot more like EDM type stuff, which I still do like. It has t- has uh, time and place. Yeah. But just on a daily, uh, like I'm someone that if you are ever around me, like I pretty much whether it's like an audio book, podcast, or music, I reckon this is a, this is probably a bit of a, a reach, but about eighty percent of my day, I reckon I'm listening to music. Like I never rarely ever just sitting around just like in normal quiet unless i'm like meditating or whatever but love my music so yeah drake little baby little dirk like all those guys um so you're legit naming like my top my top four or five in the game right now but anyway we'll do it we'll get you on for the third install on the brain tame and show and we'll just go hard on all things hip-hop man but beauty (laughs) for now mate i want to chat like i said about um getting the body that that we want i have conversations with people that are struggling to to do just that. I can only imagine the plethora of people that you run into yeah. that, um, that have consistently struggled to, again, like I said, whether it's, you know, lose weight or gain weight before we dive into, I guess, some of the mechanics, have you found, I guess, commonalities b- between people in terms of what actually holds people back from reaching their, their goals in general, when it comes to their body, are there some common themes that you've, that you see? Mm. The two main things I think Liam is, is not having full clarity around exactly what they want. So typically, you know, let's use an example of New Year's resolutions. People setting goals that are just the goals that everyone else sets. So there's no real thought behind what that specific goal is for the individual, which then leads to absolutely no accountability because they really don't give a shit whether they they achieve it or not because it's not actually their goal. That's so the clarity around specifically what they want to achieve for them. Um, regardless of what anyone else is doing, what anyone else thinks is a really important one. And then the second thing is just setting unrealistic goals. And, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, like I'm, I'm all for people like setting huge, scary goals. And that's something that I do all the time. Like I think it's extremely important to, to, to aim super high, um, you know, but the, the thing is you need to be able to reverse engineer how that's going to work. And then by reverse engineering how it's going to work, if it, if it's just not going to work, then you are setting yourself up from failure for failure since day one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a really simple example of that would be someone setting out to someone that's doing minimal exercise now that decides they want to start training and they they know they can get to the gym like on a you know like on a good week they can maybe get there three to four times, and then they and they start out like a five or six day training program. And then a couple of weeks in wonder why they're not seeing results or wonder why they hate it so much or, or just, just give up because it's just like, they constantly feel like they're failing and mm. you, know, you need to be able to have those small wins mentally and physically consistently um, to keep that momentum and, and everything moving forward in the right direction. It's very hard to do when you set yourself a goal. It's not realistic to, to you and your lifestyle. 
Mm. And that can, that goes, and the same goes with nutrition as well. Like that doesn't just apply to training. That's all across the board. You know, nutrition wise is, a, is another one, which I'm sure we'll touch on at some point today, but you know, setting calories way too low, you know, you're starting off a, you know, diet or a calorie deficit to a point where like they're counting down the days until it's over from day one, um, mm. cutting out foods that they enjoy most, um, not fueling their bodies enough to recover and grow, or even just have the energy to, to train at a, at a higher level right from day one. So mm. again, you're just, you're just setting yourself up for failure, um, which sounds pretty blunt, but it's just the truth. Like people just think that everything needs to be done to extremes, but it's just not the case. Um, it, it doesn't have to suck. Like that's, that's one big misconception that everyone has around fat loss or right. muscle, muscle growth or just getting healthy and fit in general is that it's like a chore or that it, that it sucks. It really doesn't have to, you know, obviously there's going to be points in time where it's uncomfortable and it should be like to give your body, you know, for your body to change, you need to give it a reason to. Um, but in saying that it doesn't need to be like, you didn't need to suck. Like you should enjoy it. It mm. should be slightly difficult, but that's the whole rewarding part of it. But I think just for a lot of people, it's just, it's just like going from zero to a hundred or, or looking at what's good on paper, but in theory, no, sorry, in theory, it's good. But when you look at it practically, it makes absolutely no sense for that individual, um, you know, following, you know, like following a training plan that someone who's preparing for the Olympics is doing is clearly not going to be, uh, it's clearly not suited to you because, they're doing that full time. They've been doing that the whole life. They're doing that because that is their purpose, their passion, their why, whatever it may be. And for you, you're probably just trying to get fit or maybe getting ready for an amateur event or whatever it is. Um, doesn't mean that the goal is not important, but the the way of getting there is going to look drastically different um, depending on what you like, what your lifestyle um, is like. Yeah, for sure. And I can only imagine like when you're not enjoying the process or if those goals are too lofty and I like that you touched on, it's really important to have motivating goals because you want to actually be compelled to, to put in the work. It's got to be exciting. Mm -hmm. But if it, I feel like having a, the correct time horizon is really important for people. So it's like, if that's not the case, then you're inevitably going to run into, you know, you're going to fall short on things. Things aren't just going to be practical. Um, and if you're not enjoying the process, you'll just inevitably stop. And then I imagine that just bleeds into like a really, almost like a limiting belief system that people will just will come to you um, or they'll be following a program and working at home, whatever it might be mm. going, yeah, I'm excited, but deep down they've got this history or this pattern for years and years of constantly falling short, probably in large part because they're not enjoying it and they've set just silly goals and haven't executed against it. Is that kind of what you're, what you're alluding to there? Yeah. A hundred percent. Like if, you know, if you're, if you're constantly, like I said, setting out, setting out, um, you're setting yourself goals that aren't realistic at all. Of course, that is going to lead to a failure or going to lead to a result, which is not what you're desiring in the first place. And over time, as you said, it starts to become a pattern, like a mental pattern as well. It's like, how often do you hear people say your diets don't work for me or this diet doesn't work for me or this type of training doesn't work for me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fuck, in the end of the day, it's, it, it, nutrition and training is simple. Like, the problem with the health and fitness industry is that it's obviously a very profitable industry depending on what you're selling and what you're doing. So if, if there's products, if there's certain training programs, if there's whatever it is, people are trying to sell that to you. So they do what they can to make it look attractive and sound attractive. So that just leads to an absurd amount of conflicting information mm. around nutrition and training. And a lot of it's just garbage. Like, to lose body fat, like to lose weight, you just need to be expending more energy than you are putting into your body. It's as simple as it gets, regardless of whether you follow a vegan diet, regardless of whether you do fasting, regardless of whether you like high fat and low carb or low or high carb, and low fat, like all that shit doesn't matter. Like nutrition can be broken down into very, very, very simple steps, extremely simple steps. Training is no different. Like, if you don't like a certain exercise, if you don't like a certain style of training, don't do it. Mm. But in the end of the day, like unless you're training for a very specific event or a specific sport, like if you're moving your body, you're expending energy and you're eating accordingly, whatever your goal happens to be, you should see results if you're consistent. But the second part of what you're saying there before is that like, and this is, this is the case with everything, not just health and fitness, but it's the whole like, uh, shiny object syndrome or 
whatever the hell that saying is like mm. no one has patience like no one no one's willing to to be patient and work for the results everyone wants to either right now or tomorrow or next week or as soon as possible but they don't want to hear that it's going to take time whereas you know if you're overweight or you're unfit and you know that happens to a lot of people it's not like you you're, you're it's some rare case like it's happened because you have been following the the wrong things or um or heading in the wrong direction for an extended period of time you didn't just wake up one day eat like shit not exercise and sit at home all day and then wake up the next day overweight mm. consistently for a long period of time you have either overeaten or under exercised or done the done things that aren't um working in your favor mentally or whatever for a, a long enough period of time to the point where it has now become a habit and it's now starting to show so you can't just expect like one week two weeks three weeks to do the opposite and everything you know all of a sudden you look like a great god like if it was that easy then everyone everyone would be doing it you know that's a common saying but it's it's true like mm. people don't want to hear it it's like I had a conversation on a podcast the other day and it was, it was, it was a bit more so based around, um, around the business side of, of, uh, health and fitness. But, um, we touched on the topic of like a social media following or, um, listeners to a podcast or whatever it is. Um, and you know, I'll have trainers now that are just starting out in the industry that kind of ask me how I, grew my audience and stuff like that. And, you know, the first thing I always say is that it's nowhere near where I want it to be yet. And it's nowhere near where I think it should be in comparison to the amount of effort and work I put in. Mm. But the answer that I give them, and it's never one that they want to hear is that I've been putting out content literally like daily since 2013 <laughs> and we're in 2021 now. And, you know, going back to what I said, it's not where I want it to be yet. So like, that's just, that's, that's the, uh, that's the answer that no one wants to hear, but unfortunately, you know, and that's something that I, that I try and portray as well Is it's like, I'm not here to tell you that it is going to be super easy, or I'm not here to tell you that it's not hard or that there's shortcuts or that we can do it really quickly. I'm here to tell you exactly how to do it. If you, if you know, if you're willing to commit, then I promise you, you will see results. I promise you that you will feel better about yourself promise you will get to where you want to be if you follow the right approach. But in saying that, don't just expect it to happen because it's just not going to. So, mm. you know, if you're looking for that, that next best thing, if you're looking for it to happen quickly, keep looking uh, and get used to looking because that's all you're going to be doing for a long, long time. Well said. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, there's a lot in that. For the person that is wanting to, let's say, lose weight then, we mm. know, I think most people have a pretty, at least a surface level understanding of, you know, uh, calories in versus calories out, but, and you kind of touched on it there a little bit, DK, there's like, there's, we're creatures of habit. So people get yeah. ingrained a certain way. We've already spoken about looking for the quick fix. Uh, we've spoken about trying to aim too high too early. So there's all these, I guess, variables or considerations. If we bring it back and we go, all right, cool. So for that person that's perhaps struggling almost for whatever reason, mm -hmm. where's the best place to start? Is it is it to eliminate a little bit of their diet? Is it to just increase their training load and continue their diet as is? Because we know they don't want to go from zero to a hundred immediately. Yeah. But for that person that is maybe tuning in going, I've just, I've, all I know is being, whether it's drastically overweight or, or all I know is just being that in not the shape that I want to be mm. in. Um, where should they start? Well, like before you even answer that, like the, the, like the answer to that question is to start somewhere. Yeah. Right. So it's not like uh, the other part of this is like um, paralysis by analysis. It's like, you know, people listening maybe even to this episode now that are just always searching for what the answer is, but never actually giving it a nudge and having it crack. Like it's like waiting until they find out the perfect way to do it before they do it. And there is no perfect way to do it. But I always say this, like, your body is very similar to a business. Your body is very similar to a sports car. Like you need to know that your numbers, you need to be able to have measurable things within your body to see results. Like it, there should be absolutely zero guesswork involved in getting in shape. 
Just like when you're running a business, if it's going super well, you shouldn't know why. You should know where, what parts of their business or their company are doing well, what parts aren't doing well, what numbers are, are, are you know, in the red, maybe what numbers are in the black, like where things need to chop and change. And if you don't know those numbers, then you can't be upset or disappointed that your business is fucked or that if it's doing well, you can't sit there and claim that like it's because of you. Like cause if you don't know why it's doing well, then, then like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like you need to, you need to know your numbers. So start to, I, I use the term become a CEO of your own body. So you want to become the CEO of your own body. So what I mean by that is knowing at, at least roughly how many calories you're eating per day. Now for starters, that may be just whatever, like you may just start tracking the foods that you already eat, but start to know exactly what those numbers look like. So, you know, using apps like my fitness pal and stuff like that, something super simple but tracking your food intake so that it's the same every single day or at least close. And I'm not saying to be perfect because like I have been doing this for years and I don't think I've ever finished on the exact perfect amount, like maybe a few times, but it's not my goal. Like I tell people, particularly with nutrition, like close enough is good enough as long as it's consistent. So knowing your numbers, knowing your calorie intake, uh, protein minimum is a second one that everyone should know. So, you know, I recommend two grams of protein per kilo of body weight as a minimum. So if you're a, a 60 kilo individual, 120 grams is your minimum amount of protein. Anything over that's fine, but that should be your bare minimum. And why is that? Sorry, mate. Is that to like to sustain the training load and keep you healthy? Well, protein is like the most important macronutrient in terms of uh, growth, repair. Um, it, you know, it's it's a m- metabolic um, macronutrient. It's going to help you feel fuller for longer. You know, as you mentioned, like growth and as, as I said, recovery. Mm. So super important. So those two things are the most important numbers, right? So once you know those numbers, your carbs and fats ratio, like when you get to a certain point, yes, it may be important. And, you know, physically you may respond better to one ratio compared to the other. But when we talk about body composition, it means almost fuck all. Um, Are you allowed to swear on this, on on the show? If not, then you've got some serious editing to do at the end of this. (laughs) Mate, uh, I should put like a a highlights reel together of all my F-bombs on this show in the last 12 months. So (laughs) feel free to go nuts. Oh, good. Um, So those two numbers are important, right? But, now, when then, then when, when we figure out what the goal is, so if you want to gain weight, all you need to do is make sure that that number that you're hitting every day is in a calorie surplus, meaning that you are above your maintenance intake. If you want to lose body fat, that number needs to be in a calorie deficit below your maintenance. So let's say you track now, Liam, for the next seven days what you eat every day and you don't try and do anything different. You just track your normal intake. And let's say on average you've been eating 2,500 calories a day and your body weight stays the same for the week. Mm-hmm. 2,500 calories is most likely as close as possible to your maintenance calorie intake at the moment. So for you, it's very simple. It's like, all right, if I want to lose weight, I need to be just below 2,500. If I want to gain weight, I need to be just above. Now it doesn't have to be drastic. It should be small amounts because, and, and then the last thing with the nutrition side of things for I touch on the next bit is that think of your body like a sports car, like I mentioned before. If I've got a Ferrari and I'm putting in the cheapest unleaded fuel every time I, I go fill it up, it's going to come a point in time where it just starts to run like shit and it doesn't run like it's supposed to and you're probably going to have issues. Your body's the same. Like in the end of the day, calories and protein is the most important. But if you're just getting all your calories from shit food, even though you know body composition wise, you still may see results, you're not going to feel good. You're not going to recover well. Your health is not going to be as good. So I like to stick to what I, what I call the 80-20 rule. So 80% as a minimum of my calories come from nutrient-dense whole foods like your typical healthy food that you would typically hear about. The remaining 10 to 20% can be used for other things. It might be a glass of wine with dinner. It could be ice cream before bed, like whatever. A muffin with your, with your coffee in the morning. It doesn't really matter. Your body doesn't know what you eat. It knows how much you're eating. So, you know, the whole notion of avoiding carbs, avoiding bread, fucking all the rest of it, it's just all bullshit. Unless you genuinely are, you know, celiac, unless you're genuinely intolerant to dairy, unless you just don't feel good on these things, there's no need to cut anything out when you're trying to lose weight as long as you stick to your numbers. So that's the first part. Now, the second part is I tell everyone, particularly that are trying to lose body fat, to lose weight, 
that you want to start with as much fruit as possible and as little amount of exercise as possible. Now, before anyone starts to think to themselves, why the fuck am I listening to this guy? He's got no idea. Let me explain. What I mean by that is people typically do the opposite. So something and I'm going to start so after the first few weeks, they're training every day, maybe even twice a day, doing his cardio, eating next to nothing. And then, you know, all well and good. You see some good results and then you hit a plateau. So my question then is what the fuck we, what are we going to do now? So you're either going to have to do more, which you're already at capacity pretty much, or you're going to have to eat less, which is going to be even more miserable. So when you're starting a fellows phase, I start with his, my calories, as high as possible. And when I say as high as possible, I only mean like just below maintenance. So I'm still in a calorie deficit, but I'm not dropping an absurd amount. So go back to your example. If your maintenance is 2,500, you might start at 2,400. So you're in a deficit, but it's not much. Training wise, same. Start as little as possible. So maybe you decide that you want to be lifting weights four days a week. Obviously your situation is a bit different at the moment, but Say, for example, for someone listening, they want to start with four sessions a week. Cool. Four weight sessions a week, no cardio, all good. Once you reach a plateau, all of a sudden the process becomes fucking easy as shit. Like now all I have to do is either drop fruit a little bit or increase my energy output a little bit and I see results until we reach another plateau and then it's rinse and repeat. So that could look like, you know, you might go from 2,400 to 2,300. So you've taken an extra 700 calories from your week. Like if you do that, but over seven days, you're going to continue to see results because you're in more of a deficit. Now you may decide that I don't want to bring fruit any lower. I want to increase my energy output, but because you started with not too much, you've got heaps of room to move. So you might go, all right, I'm going to add on a fifth day of weights or I might want to do a bit of cardio. So I'm just going to add in one cardio session a week for 30 minutes. That's it. Now that'll most likely kickstart fat loss again for an extended period of time. And when you reach a plateau, like I said, rinse and repeat, it's either slight reduction in food, slight increase in energy output. All of a sudden the fat loss process becomes easy. It becomes enjoyable. You don't lose the muscle mass. You don't performance doesn't drop off. Um, and most importantly, you're seeing consistent results that are long lasting and something that you can actually uh, maintain because there's no point doing a fat loss phase or a challenge or whatever. If like I said, you're counting down the days till it's over or you look great for like two days and then you look like shit afterwards because you know, you've had your two days where you look great, but you were that hungry or that sick of training that you just blow it out for the next few weeks and all of a sudden all the hard work's gone. So mm. look for me, it's not about, it's pretty much trying to stay away from extremes, stay away from extremes do the small things exceptionally well on a daily basis and you'll see results. And, and typically it's, it's simple. Like, a, like, like the way I've just broken it down right now, after this, I'm going to ask if I can take the audio and the video from that. So I can use that for basically anyone that ever asks this question again, because it's, it's simple, man. It's like, it's not difficult stuff, but um, like I said, it's not always the answer that people want to hear because it's, it mm. takes a longer period of time to, to, to see the results. But I mean, I've been doing it since I figured this out. Like I made all the mistakes when I started, like literally everything you can make in terms of training and food. And then when I started taking information from reliable sources and, um, and evidence-based training and nutrition methods and putting them into practice and seeing that it actually worked, I was like, well, why would I any, do any different now in saying that I, I, the one really important thing with the industry um, just quickly is that like, you have to be open. You have to have like a growth mindset. So if someone came to me tomorrow and said, check this out, there is 10 different research papers to show that it is important how many grams of carbs and fats you eat, or it is important what specific food you eat, or you do need to do X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Then I would start doing that because it's, it's right in front of me. Like the evidence is there. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of people just kind of think that like, because so-and-so like it's the whole correlation versus causation. Like you look at someone that looks the way you want to look and you see that they don't eat carbs and you go, fuck, that means I can't eat carbs because if they didn't do it and they look like that for me to look like that, I need to do that. But it's just not how it works. I reckon there's a lot of people listening, including my girlfriend that are hearing you say that carbs are okay going, fuck yes. This is the best news ever. 
um, something I want to pressure on a little bit or just get a bit more clarity around. You mentioned weights a fair bit in that in terms of the training. And yep. so I feel like a lot of people, the reason they fall short on the goal, I know that I've been guilty of this at times in different times of my life is like there's certain exercises you enjoy versus others. Now, coincidentally, I actually personally love running. We're talking about that off air, but yeah. some people may hate it. So you, you didn't speak a lot about running or, or cardio much. Is there like, what are your thoughts when it comes to like, is it just an old wives tale or something that I've maybe heard, you know, um, misinformedly uh, mm. growing up that cardio is the way to lose weight. Is that a, a fallacy? To an extent, yes. Like, I'll put it this way. Cardio is not the answer to fat loss. That's, that's probably the most simple mm. way to put it. Um, yeah, I've mentioned this on a few different podcasts, but I did a, I did a little case study um, years back. I'd just come off a physique competition where I obviously got like, probably like the leanest I'd ever been at that point. And in that prep I was doing, I didn't know cardio. I think that I did it maybe a couple of hit sessions towards the end and I were maybe 10 minutes of cardio. After the competition, I very like very late um, signed up to like a half marathon. Um, and so I drastically increased my cardio like towards, towards that run I was doing, you know, a few hours a week or whatever. So I went from doing no cardio to a few hours of cardio a week, which is shit like, like fucking increase it by uh, an absurd amount yeah um but in the in the process i purposely ate above my calorie uh, above my maintenance so i ate in a calorie surplus while getting ready for this run and gained almost three kilos of weight bef- like leading into the run now it was a fucking horrible idea for the run because it made it heaps harder but for the purpose of the case study it just showed people that cardio doesn't equal fat loss your food intake needs to be aligned with whatever your energy output is. So I talk about cardio as a tool. It's a tool to increase your energy output. Um, now, before I keep talking about that, I will say that like, I do think it's extremely important to have obviously good cardiovascular health. So whether that is things like walking or whether you do just want to throw in a few cardio sessions a week purely for heart for for your heart um but the better cardiovascular system you have the easier it is to recover between sessions or between sets when you're doing weights and stuff anyway you got more um readily available oxygen to the working muscles but you don't need to you, your body doesn't know what the fuck you're doing your body doesn't go oh liam liam's on the spin bike um we may we better make sure that the, the energy that he burns now is body fat compared to Liam going to the gym, say, let's say you go for a run and you burn 400 calories, right? And you go into the gym and you burn 400 calories doing strength training and, you know, keeping the intensity high and your, and your, your maybe rest periods low. That's 400 calories either way, regardless mm. of whether it's from running or what, regardless of whether it's from weights, it's still 400 calories. So mm. if you're in a, if you're in a calorie deficit, like a negative energy balance, you will lose weight regardless of what you've done. So, you know, and as I just touched on briefly before, I've done, I think I end up doing maybe five or six physique competitions and like I got ridiculously lean, like unhealthily lean, which is the whole point of the competitions. But there was like, I think the most cardio I did in any prep for any of those was like a maximum of 10 minutes a week. Mm. Um, and, so there's there's and an was, opportunity for people to essentially find the the training that they're going to enjoy going back to what you touched on earlier it's all about enjoyment yeah i i run i run three times a week now and i'm not trying to lose fat because i enjoy running but i know when i want to lose fat uh i'd rather put more of my energy especially if i'm eating in a calorie deficit and you know you there's going to be a point in time when you get to a certain level of body fat where you do feel hungry a lot more often because you're lean like your body doesn't want to be that lean so if I'm, you know, don't have as much energy as what I usually do, I'd rather put that into lifting weights because if I want to look like I lift weights, if I want to look like I've got muscle mass and that I'm lean and and I've got more muscle muscular definition because of the the illusion of the the lower body fat, I, I'm gonna spend more time in the gym. Like, if you want, like, it's like girls who want to look. Let's let's use a very typical cliche example. So girls who want to look like they have nice glutes, maybe like 
you know, the word tone gets thrown around a lot. It means fuck all. There's only one thing you can do with two things you can do with the muscle. You can grow it. It can either get bigger or smaller. Mm. The, the, the tone defined ripped look is purely just having muscle mass there and then a low enough body fat percentage to be able to reveal the shape. So everyone out there that's doing all this cardio to look a certain way uh, often get quite disappointed when they get to their goal weight or whatever, and they don't look they don't look the way they want it to look is because they don't have any muscle mass to show. Mm. So it's all well and good to to lose all this body fat, and lose all this body fat and weight. But if you've got fucking nothing there underneath, then yes, you may be lighter and you may look a little bit leaner, but you're not going to have the shape or whatever that you you hope for. And and again, it's important to understand it in terms of lean muscle mass, like everyone should be trying to increase their lean muscle tissue. Like, and, 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 and the other thing about that is that like, it's not easy to do building lean muscle tissue is fucking hard. So mm. for the girls out there and you know, I know there's some guys as well, but predominantly it's girls, the girls that are listening that are scared of lifting weights because they think they're going to get big and bulky. It's just not the case. It's not going to happen. It, I mean, I've been trying to get big and bulky for fucking since I was <laughs> Me too, bro still hasn't worked out and I train it as hard as I can and I purposely try and eat for it and it's not easy to do. Yeah. So like, you know, I use this analogy um, around this, which is, is quite a funny one. It's like, you know, if you're not lifting weight, if you're a girl and you're avoiding strength training because if you're scared of getting big and bulky, it's like not driving your car in case you become like Daniel Ricciardo like, or an F1 <laughs> driver. It's just like, it's, just, it's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't can't remember what the question was now, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, I get you, mate. I get you. So then, just to change gears a little bit, because look, I reckon the bulk of my audience anyway um, is either going to want to lose weight or tone up or increase body uh, muscle tissue, like you touched on there. And there's probably a snapshot of people that do want to go the other extreme, put on size. You know, we're just laughing then about trying to bulk up. And admittedly, you know, for me personally, right now. Um, you know, we're talking off air about I'm training for an Ironman. So I've got my yeah. goal, which is great. But then funnily enough, when that's done into 2022, I'm probably someone that's going to want to put on size. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe just before we finish things up today, to go a little bit into what that looks like. And I imagine a lot of it's probably just the reverse of what we've spoken about. But I guess for, for me, and I reckon this might be a question on people's minds potentially when it, when it comes to trying to put on size, is yeah. there a... I guess, is there a healthy and a non-healthy way or, or, or dare I say it, a quote unquote better and, and shit away to <laughs> put on that size? Yeah. So it, similar to what you touched on, it, it, it really is almost just the reverse of, of what we've been talking about in terms of fat loss. So um, people often ask me or, or even like clients that I'm working with kind of say to me, you know, what are we going to do with my training once I want to build muscle mass? I'm like, not like not a great deal different to what we're doing now. You're just going to be eating more mm-hmm. and you're going to be making sure that you overload. So to, to build a muscle, like you need to obviously create some form of, of, of muscle tissue damage for it to repair and grow and get stronger and bigger. So you need to give it a reason to change to do that. You need to overload. So the term progressive overload um, is, is what's commonly used within the industry. And all that means is that, like I said, you're giving the, the muscle or the body a reason to change. So you need to be doing more over time and that can happen in a number of ways. It can be more weight on the bar or, you know, more dumbbell, like heavier dumbbells or whatever, more weight. It can be more reps, it can be more sets. It might be slower tempo. It might just be, um, you know, better mind muscle connection with the exercise that you've already been doing, but there has to be some form of progressive overload without that. There's no reason the body is going to change. Like, I see people in the gym all the time doing the same exercises every time with the exact same dumbbells, same order. And, and, you know, they look the same every single, they always look the same Mm. because they're not giving their body a reason to change. Like if you went out today and ran three Ks at a certain pace uh, and and let's say it was quite difficult today, if you ran that same track, the same distance at the same pace over an extended period of time, you're going to get to a point in time where that becomes easy and your body's not going to have to work hard to do it. So the energy output to do it is not going to be the same. So like if I went today and ran 10K as hard as I could uh, and expended, uh, let's use an example, like 600 calories or whatever, 
And I did that every single day. And it got to a point where it became pretty easy at that pace. I might only be burning like a couple hundred calories to do it because my body doesn't have to work anywhere near as hard. Mm. It's the same with, with muscle growth. So two really important things, making sure you're in a calorie surplus now. So just above maintenance, it doesn't need to be, you know, another mistake people make is just eating anything and everything thinking that, you know, more is better because they're trying to put on size. But if you're putting on weight quickly, the chances are it's body fat, not muscle mass. Cause muscle mass is like I've mentioned quite hard to grow anyway. Mm. And then when you decide to get lean, the process is a shitload harder because you've got so much more weight to lose. So, um, I like to try and find a bit of a sweet spot, like just in a calorie surplus, um, still, you know, making sure I'm choosing good, uh, food sources with my strength training. Like I said, not much changes at all, really. Like if anything, I start to do a little bit less because, you know, especially if you're someone that maybe struggles to eat enough calories to be in a surplus, if you're training six, seven days a week and doing all this shit, you're fucking literally making it harder for yourself to grow because you're expending so much energy that you need to be eating more to allow that growth and recovery process to happen. So that's, that's basically as hard as it gets. It's not that, it's not that difficult. It's like eating in a surplus, overloading, um, and, you know, basing majority of your training around compound movements or at least looking to overload those compound movements at the start, you're not going to be able to improve every single exercise, every single lift, every session. It doesn't, it's just not going to happen. Mm. So it might be choosing one exercise from every workout for the week that you really focus on at the start of the session. And like I said, it, either more reps, more weight, more sets, whatever it is. And if you're doing that and you're eating in a calorie surplus, then over time you will grow. It does take a long time. It, it's not, not, not a quick fix. Again, I, like for me, losing body fat is the easy part. Like that's, that's like the, that's like the reward, right? Mm. If you're someone who's trying to to look like they've got muscle mass and that may not be for everyone, but the, the hard work, and this is where most people go wrong is they think this is where you can relax, but the hard work is growing the muscle mass is overloading is staying in a surplus, all that shit. When you want to reveal the shape and reduce body fat, that's the reward. That's the easy bit. That's like, oh, I've, I've got it. All I got to do is retain at least retain the muscle mass now like lose a bit of body fat and I look a shitload better. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a pretty simple plan and consistency. Mm. Mate, uh, a lot in this chat for, for everyone, whether it's lose weight, gain weight, you know, grow the muscles, of course, we spoke about. It's interesting, as you were talking as well, in my head, I was thinking about the process of gamifying things. Like I, I, when it comes to business when it comes to really any kind of pursuit i remember hearing a few people that i you know tune into regularly talk about this idea of gamifying and so in terms of how you make the process fun yeah. so whether it is that person that's trying to gain weight or, or lose weight you know we're talking about using some of the apps to actually track your calories what i'm hearing mm-hmm. you say is and i'd love to get your thoughts on this what i'm hearing you say though is um almost rather than approach that process from a place of like desperation and you know uh, oh, I have to lose all this weight. And it's like, yeah, like you have a goal it's, and there is work to be done, but how can we kind of, I guess, gamify it in a way that you can, every day you can check your calories and you can have a look and it becomes almost exciting and fun in and of yeah. itself. I reckon that is the yeah. key to any sense of longevity or consistency. Yeah, it's like there's almost two parts to that. It's it's for me and my clients, I say, I kind of uh, use the terms of like a, a checklist, like you have your daily checklist that you tick off every day, the small, boring, easy tasks that need to be done. And at the end of the each week, when I, when I check in with my online clients, it's always like, you know, all right, what's your score out of 10 this week? Or like on a, you know, out of 10, how consistent were you with X, Y, and Z? If you're ticking the boxes, you will see results, but even breaking it down another level again, like you said, um, let's use nutrition as an example. Uh, I, uh, I talk about your nutritional intake being like a financial budget and, um, and you know, you want to, you want to be careful that you don't get to the point where it becomes a bit too obsessive because you can almost go the opposite way. Like yeah. you go from sticking to a strict meal plan to moving over to my approach where you, you eat whatever you kind of want, as long as it fits your numbers. But then if you get too, you know, if you get too anal about the, the, the numbers, all of a sudden you're like, 
over overthinking fucking everything that you're eating. So it's a, it's a fine line, but I, I like, you know, I like, like, like getting out my phone in the morning and I typically try and plan like at least breakfast, lunch and dinner before the day started yeah, and then work the rest of my day around those numbers. So I know I'm not going to blow out or whatever, but it's like, it's kind of like you said, it's like a little bit of a game. It's like spend your, your, your daily budget wisely. Like, yeah, I mm. could, if I wanted to, I could go and eat Maccas three times today and still lose body fat at the end of the week if I hit my numbers. But it's not smart because I'm, I'm going to be hungry. It's not going to fill me up. I'm not going to feel good on it. So it's just about playing around with like what foods can I fit in, you know, what I want to eat tonight. If they do have something on that's social, I don't have to worry about sticking to a diet or whatever. Like I'm still... I'm not blowing out at all, but I'm, I'm able to work that food within my numbers so that I continue to see results. And that's what it's all about. It's like, you want to make this a lifestyle. It's, it's not a quick fix. Um, it has to become a lifestyle and it has to become suitable within your own lifestyle and not what anyone else is doing or, or, or what's good on paper, because that may not be great for you. Yeah. I love it, mate. Speaking of lifestyle, you're the host of the uh, fitness and lifestyle Podcast. I think we touched on this last time we were on the show, but just really quickly before we wrap up, mate, if you do you have any memories or, or moments or, or guests that stand out to you um, that you've been able to connect with in in recent times? I'm just curious. Mate, honestly, it's um, I've just been f- super fortunate to meet to connect with a lot of people that you know otherwise I wouldn't have had the chance to do so. Um, I feel as though every single guest that I have on brings something different to the table. So. You know, I learned a lot of the time there's, there's maybe like a bigger name guest or someone that I'm really excited for that, um, you know, I definitely wouldn't say is disappointing, but may not be as valuable as another guest who you didn't really have any expectations around or, or you may not have expected to get a lot out of. So there's not really anyone in like specific, but, um, you know, one person that I was, I was extremely, I was actually a little bit nervous, um, for this one. There was a, there's one or two that I was nervous for. Um, uh, Hugh Van Kylenberg was one of them. Um, you know, and since then been lucky enough to, to become mates with Hugh and he's just a ripping bloke and extremely easy to talk to. Um, but I was, I was a little bit nervous, um, before that one cause I was so, uh, impacted by his book mm. and it was so much that I wanted to make sure the audience was able to, to get out of it that I probably, overthought a little bit. Um, and then the other one was, uh, who was the other one? Oh, Dr. Dr. John Demartini. Um, for anyone who's read the secret, he was obviously, uh, one of the main authors in that. And he was incredible and he's obviously extremely academic and that's not exactly my strong suit. So, um, I was just making sure that I kept it, uh, kept the episode very actionable and, and valuable for the listeners. Um, there were a couple and there was one more I did, uh, I did one. I was very lucky to do one with, um, David Meltzer. I don't know. You know who David yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. I know. He's the, um, he's like an NFL guy. He's, um, a player manager and agent. Management. Yeah. 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 So he, uh, he, like for anyone who's seen the movie, Jerry Maguire, like he was one of the business partners in that sporting agency, um, that they created that movie around. Uh, and he was like the CEO of, of Samsung when they released the first smartphone, um, I, and I, I really liked his story. He, he basically got rich as fuck early, early, really early. Um, and learned the hard way, um, about making mistakes with money and, and, and having the wrong values and stuff and went bankrupt and then very quickly became an, a, a multimillionaire again, but this time around with all the right values and, and, um, and his whole purpose now is to serve others. So he was someone I was excited to chat with. Um, I was literally, I got given like, it doesn't really happen that often with anyone that I've had on the show, but with him, I was given like a strict 20 minute time period. So yeah. there was so much I wanted to talk about, but at the same time, I knew that people could hear, hear most of his story pretty much anywhere. So I kind of just had to put some thought to exactly what I wanted to speak about to make sure we could get plenty of value in that in such a short period of time. Spot on. Well, like I said, it's a ripping, uh, it's a ripping podcast. The work you do is awesome. Super valuable chat today for, for everyone that's tuning in. We're all trying to optimize in some way. Um, so I appreciate you coming at the time, my man. I'll link all your socials in the notes below for people to connect with you if you guys tuning in want to learn more. Uh, but mate, DK, thank you once again. Mate, thanks for having me on. Um, and we've got a tap of time for you to jump on my show as well. But yeah, hopefully everyone's got 
gotten some value out of uh, today's episode. Thanks again, man. Awesome.